Hi everybody, welcome again to ABC. We're continuing our journey through the Acts of the Apostles and we've come to Acts chapter 16, uh, culminating in the story of Paul and Silas in prison. But I thought it'd be good just to spend a few minutes just um, looking at how they actually ended up in prison. Very interesting if you read the first few verses of Acts 16, and I'm going to pick it up in, in verse 6. And Paul and his companions were on their second missionary journey, preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the wonderful gospel of grace, wherever they went. But how important it is to be led at all times by the Holy Spirit. Because twice in uh, verse 6 and in verse 9, it actually says that they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Isn't that interesting? And again, later on, in verse 7, in fact, it says, but the Spirit did not permit them. You know, in some translations, it says the Spirit of Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit. See how important it is always to be led by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes our desires or even our feelings may not be what the Holy Spirit is leading us to. And they felt that that's where they should go, that's where they should preach. But the Holy Spirit said, no, that's not where I want you. And then we read that Paul had this vision of a man appeared to him in night, in the night and uh, there was a calling to come over to Macedonia, present day Greece, part of Greece. It says, come over to Macedonia and help us. So after they'd seen the vision, it was concluded as, they, as Paul shared with his companions that they were to go to preach the gospel to them. And so then next uh, we have recorded for us that they landed at the place called Philippi, which was in the northern part of Macedonia. And there they settled themselves down. And on this one occasion, they were going to a prayer meeting or to the house of prayer. And there they met some ladies and particularly a woman called Lydia, who was a businesswoman. And they shared with her the good news of the gospel and she gladly received. And in verse 15 of that chapter, it says not only did she receive, but it says that she and her household were baptised. So the whole family, the whole household servants and all came to a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to find that again later on in the story that we're sharing. And I get so excited when I read verses like that. And it particularly seems to happen within the early days of the apostles. It happened with Peter when he went to Cornelius' house, that the whole household received the good news. The Holy Spirit fell upon them, the first Gentile families to come to know the Lord for themselves. And that gives me hope, and I hope it gives you hope that Jesus wants our families, our whole families, saved. Well, then we move on and we find this encounter that Paul and Silas had with this slave girl. It's, it's called, but she had a spirit of divination and uh, she went around fortune telling. And in fact, that was true because she was actually making a fortune uh, and was giving the money to her slave owners. And she kept following Paul around as he preached and she would keep shouting out that they're from the Most High God. But eventually, after a few days, Paul recognised this wasn't um, something from the Lord. This was actually a, a demonic spirit. And so he cast it out of her. 
And obviously, although it's not recorded, I believe that a remarkable change took place because the owners were furious. They could see that something had happened and they were going to lose lots of money. So what they did was that they dragged Paul and Silas to the authorities and claimed that these people were uh, preaching a false gospel and they were causing all sorts of trouble. And the crowd got behind them, mob rule as it was. And so eventually both Paul and Silas were arrested. And through this, it says um, later on in that chapter, it says when the masters saw their hope of profit was gone, this is verse 19, they seized Paul and Silas, dragged them to the marketplace and to the authorities, and they brought them to the magistrates and said, these troublemakers, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. And so, again, the mob rules, the multitude rose up against them, the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they'd laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison commanding the jailer to keep them securely. And having he, as important as having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Now this is very interesting because we know uh, later on, in, uh, particularly in chapter 22, the same thing happened where... Um, Paul and Silas were arrested, but Paul stopped them because he says, I am a Roman citizen. Now, if you were a Roman citizen, and I did read up about this, that particularly in Rome itself, only five or 10% of the actual population were Roman citizens. And that gave you special privileges. You were not to lay hands on anyone who was a Roman citizen. You certainly were not permitted to beat them. And you certainly were not allowed to put them in prison. I was trying to think of an up-to-date what I could share with you. Do you know when we see these films and, and suddenly people produce a card or whatever and they have diplomatic immunity and you can't touch them? That's what Paul and Silas had. But Paul didn't use it. And I believe he knew that God was in this, even though they were severely beaten, put in, put in prison in the darkest, most horrible parts, chained up. He knew that somehow God was at work. I reckon if I was Silas, I'd have said to Paul, that's another fine mess you've got us into. Why didn't you say that we were Roman citizens? But maybe he too, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, knew that something remarkable was about to take place. So in verse 25, it says, But at midnight, Paul and si Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Wow. Isn't that amazing? I thought a lot about this. I wonder how I would react. It. They didn't moan. They didn't complain. They didn't say, Lord, what have you done? Why have we suffered in such a way? They began to sing. They began to pray and they just lifted up their voices to heaven. Paul writing in Thessalonians Chapter 1, verse 5, verse 18. Do you remember he said, give thanks in all circumstances? He didn't say give thanks for the circumstances, but give thanks in the circumstance. Although I believe in this case, Paul was probably rejoicing even for the circumstances because he knew God was at work in some way. But that's not easy to do, is it? And in a sense, we've been in a prison situation during the COVID and still many are fearful and frightened. Maybe we've, we've been going through uh, 
loneliness, depression, so many things. Perhaps things that nobody else knows about. Maybe we've had a, a bad doctor's report. But in the midst of it, we can give thanks and praise. Not for the circumstance, but in it. Because something is about to happen. Well, I'm going to leave this first part because we're going to see what happens when we praise God, when we lift up our voices, when we pray and just seek his face. Do you remember Paul writing back to the Philippians in chapter 4 said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. And with that wonderful thought, we'll come back and see what happens next. <laughs>